As we round the bend into our fifth broadcast together, it's hard to overlook the whirlwind of events we've journeyed through with Clem and Clive. Last week, we waded through a cascade of musical cadences that pulled at our heartstrings and stood in awe of the teleprinter's continuous enigma, spitting out news and messages from you, our dear listeners. Today, as we tune into this new chapter, dated September 22, 1938, the dance of history, machinery, and humanity promises to be as riveting as ever. So lend your ears and hearts once more as we accompany Clem and Clive on another mesmerizing voyage across the radio waves. Well, good evening, dear listeners. We're excited to have you all aboard once again. Isn't that right, Clive? Absolutely, Clem. We've got a splendid evening planned for you all, filled with marvelous tunes and riveting conversations. Speaking of tunes, let's get the show on the road with a charming little number. This one's an oldie but goodie from 1926. Clive, would you do the honors? With pleasure, Clem. Ladies and gentlemen, to start us off tonight, we present to you a delightful melody that's sure to get your feet tapping. It's the enchanting But I Do, You Know I Do, performed by Paul Ash and his orchestra with vocals by Harry Maxfield. A lovely choice, Clive. You know, dear listeners, this is a piece that harkens back to the Roaring Twenties, a time of exuberance and optimism. The heartfelt lyrics combined with the rhythm of the orchestra truly make this one a timeless classic. Well said, Clem. Now, without further ado, let's allow the music to speak for itself. Sit back, relax, and let the melodious strains of But I Do, You Know I Do transport you to a simpler time. Enjoy.
Well, Clive, I think it's high time we keep the music rolling. What's next on our musical menu? Indeed, Clem. Next up, we've got a tune that's sure to resonate with many of our listeners. From the year 1931, it's Burt Lown and his hotel Biltmore Orchestra with Please Don't Talk About Me When I'm Gone, featuring the dulcet tones of Elmer Feldkamp. Oh, that's a remarkable piece, Clive. For those who might not be familiar, Burt Lown was a highly respected band leader in his time, and his orchestra was the house band at the luxurious Biltmore Hotel in New York City. They were known for their smooth, melodic style that beautifully complemented the elegance and glamour of the era. That's right, Clem. And Elmer Feldkamp, the vocalist on this number, was known for his warm and tender voice that added just the right touch of emotion to the song. Listeners, as you tune into this song, allow yourselves to be transported back to the ballroom of the Biltmore, gliding across the polished floors to the rhythm of this enchanting tune. So sit back. Close your eyes and enjoy Please Don't Talk About Me When I'm Gone. And remember, whether it's bygone days or present moments, there's always a melody to match our musings here on our program. Stay tuned, dear listeners. to catch up with all the news. Today is September 22nd, 1938, and Clive, it has indeed been quite a week, hasn't it? That it has, Clem. Let's take our listeners through it, shall we? Absolutely. Let's start with last Friday, September 16th. The city of Los Angeles had quite the political shuffle, electing Fletcher Bowren as mayor following the recall of Frank L. Shaw. And, oh, how the stage dimmed with the passing of French-born American actress Valerie Berger. Right you are. Now... Saturday the 17th was noteworthy as Neville Chamberlain returned from his meeting with Hitler. He hinted that settling this Sudetenland issue might just be the key to peace. It's also worth noting that Bruno Jasinski, a notable figure in the world of Polish literature, 
was executed in the Soviet Union. Some say it was his bold critiques of both the East and West that did him in. A tragic loss indeed. Moving to Sunday, September 18th, while diplomats huddled in London discussing Czechoslovakia's fate, Sports fans had their eyes on the ball, or rather the lack of it, as the New York Yankees snagged the American League pennant due to a game cancellation. Ah, sports. Always a welcome diversion. On Monday, September 19th, Prague faced a diplomatic quandary as the Anglo-French handed over their proposal about Sudetenland's annexation. Meanwhile, the world bid farewell to Pauline Frederick, a titan of the silver screen. And then there was Tuesday, September 20th. Czechoslovakia, showing some real spine, rejected the Anglo-French proposal. Oh, the twists and turns of diplomacy. On Wednesday, the 21st, the diplomatic drums beat louder as Czechoslovakia felt the squeeze from both British and French ambassadors as they urged President Edvard Ben to accept their annexation plan. Stateside, the New England hurricane wreaked havoc, and in brighter news, the Marx Brothers lit up the screen with room service, while Cole Porter's musical, You Never Know, graced the Broadway stage. After wading through all that news, I reckon we could all use a bit of a musical breather. Let's take a step back to 1936, shall we? Here's Ted Weems and his orchestra with the five-piece band. And keep an ear out for Parker Gibbs lending his voice to this tune. It's just the lift we need after such a week. Start a harmonizing, it's surprising what a five piece band can do. Hear the weary moan of the old trombone. When he starts in praising, it's amazing what a five piece band can do. They play the hottest tunes, that's all. Swing that 12 string. They go to town on bugle calls with a hidey hidey ho on the off beat. When the drummer man plays to beat the band. Why, it's just the start of only part of what a five-piece band can do. Remember those odd black boxes and mics we stumbled upon here a while ago? Indeed, Clem. Left us scratching our heads, they did. Still no word on their origin, either. Here's the twist, listeners. Lately, during specific discussions, or when we delve into pressing news, these mics, they seem to hum ever so slightly. It's eerie, Clem. It's like they're not just picking up our voices, but maybe the weight of the stories we share. It feels as though they're absorbing the very essence of the events. Let's experiment, Clive. Today, on September 22nd, there's been a shift in Czechoslovakia. John Sarovi has stepped up as prime minister. And Chamberlain, he's in a high-stakes dance with Hitler, who seems hungrier for power by the minute. Spot on, Clem. Each time we think we've seen it all, Hitler moves the markers. It's as if his ambitions know no bounds. Europe's on tenterhooks, wondering what his next play will be. Well, I'll be. 
There's that vibration we talked about, subtle but definitely there. It's as though the microphone is capturing more than just our voices. Fascinating, isn't it? Indeed, Clem. It's a mystery we'll continue to unravel. In the meantime, dear listeners, we promise to keep you updated. But for now, let's get back to the music. Speaking of which, here's a treat from 1926. Paul Ash and his orchestra performing always with the charming vocals of Milton Watson. Enjoy. something peculiar, Clive. Another message from Blue Aerospace. We heard from him last week, too, didn't we? Quite odd, isn't it? This teleprinter typically sends us the news, but here we have a repeat communication from this individual. He says, my, my, what is cooking in Germany? Indeed, quite the mysterious commentator we've got in Blue. Seems he's got his eye on global events, particularly in Germany. Yes, and if I remember correctly, his comment last week had something to do with coal, wasn't it? Exactly, Clive. A curious connection to our news about Germany. Do you think he's hinting at something deeper? It's hard to say, Clem. But one thing's for sure, Blue Aerospace has a knack for drawing our attention. Perhaps our other listeners might have thoughts on his cryptic messages. True, and as the political cauldron stirs in Europe, especially in Germany, these teleprinter messages become ever more intriguing. But as always, we'll keep our ears to the ground and our eyes on the news. And our minds open to any and all messages, be they news or cryptic comments. 
Stay with us, folks, as we unravel the tapestry of our times, thread by thread. Well, Clive, here's a spirited greeting from Lackiness. Hey, what's up? Quite the modern turn of phrase, wouldn't you say? The youth of today, always keeping us on our toes. To answer your question, Lackiness, the sky's up, the news is flowing, and we're here broadcasting the happenings of the world. How about you? What brings you to our teleprinter's attention today? I can't help but wonder, isn't it a tad pricey to use the teleprinter for casual banter like that? One might say it's like using a typewriter to swat a fly. Ha! Ah, a delightful analogy, Clem. Though you're right, I'd imagine the teleprinter to be reserved for pressing matters. Perhaps our friend Lackiness has deeper pockets than we imagined, or maybe there's more to this message than meets the eye. Well, while we unwrap the mystery of these enigmatic messages, let's pivot to something a bit more harmonious, Clive. I think our ears, and those of our listeners, are in need of a musical interlude. I couldn't agree more, Clem. After all this talk of politics and puzzling teleprinter messages, a song sounds just about right. So, dear listeners, allow us to grace your ears with the entrancing tunes of Ben Selvin and his orchestra, transporting you right out of heaven. A gem from 1928, it's a musical embrace that'll sweep you off your feet. Right out of heaven you came to my arms And I will never let you go away from me Listeners, we're about to venture into another musical landscape with Ted Weems. Celebratin' is on the menu featuring the vocal stylings of Red Ingle, dating back to the illustrious year of 1936. It's a piece that's as vibrant as a sunbeam breaking through a cloudy sky. Enjoy.
celebrating. Everybody come and join the celebration. Meet the sweet one, the one I adore. Salute the sweet one, the party is born. Bring your girlfriends, bring your boyfriends. When the night ends, how happy we'll be. Then we'll have one final toast to the one I love the most, celebrating the fact that she loves me. As the hands of the clock make their steady march towards the half-hour mark, I must say, it's been a very interesting show tonight. It sure has, Clive. We've navigated through the tempest of world events, and amid it all, discovered that these microphones may be more special than we initially thought. Indeed, Clem. Who would have guessed that when these mysterious devices showed up, encased in that enigmatic black box, they would unfold an even larger mystery before our very eyes? And speaking of black boxes, Clive, I can't help but cast my thoughts back to the larger one. Mr. Harrington assured us it was but a figment of our imagination, yet the memory of its stark reality lingers. Ah, questions upon questions, Clem. I don't dare to question Mr. Harrington's reasoning, but logic and the very evidence of our eyes suggest the teleprinter would have nestled perfectly within that elusive container. Mysteries wrapped in enigmas, Clive. Well, as the sands of time continue to slip through the hourglass, I suppose we'll just have to wait and see what the future brings. Hopefully, we'll unveil the origins of these microphones and perhaps, just perhaps, find where that figment of our imagination disappeared to. And until that day dawns, we remain your companions through the airwaves, unfolding the tales of our times with you, our esteemed listeners. As the stars twinkle their silent sonatas above, this is Clive, your friend in the ether, signing off. And this is Clem, your other friend, echoing the sentiments of farewell. We meet in times of certainty and mystery alike, united by the invisible threads of radio waves. Good night, dear listeners. May the morrow bring answers, and with them, the promise of another dance through the enigmatic and the known. Good evening once more, dear listeners. Tonight, with Clem and Clive, We've been serenaded by the harmonies of the past and ushered through the unfolding tapestry of world events. We've ventured into the mysterious dance of enigmatic microphones and cryptic messages from the teleprinter, echoing an unuttered symphony of interaction that dances on the precipice of time. Our beloved duo, with their charismatic banter, find themselves, perhaps unknowingly, as conduits of a conversation that stretches beyond the confines of our studio, reaching into the silent yet potent echoes of tomorrow. Until our souls converge again in the harmonious dance of another evening, this is Mr. Harrington bidding you good night. <laughs>